YouTube, all my Forex fiends out there, Corey Smith here, CoreFX, bringing you another weekly technical talk. This is going to be episode three. All my returning viewers, thank you very much. I appreciate all the support. Please stay tuned. These videos, much more content to come. All the new subscribers, new watchers, thank you very much for tuning in. In this video, I'm going to do an in-depth dive into the Forex markets via technical analysis. I'm going to go over the U.S. crosses and other pairs on my watch list for the week ahead, show you guys what I'm looking at, what trading opportunities I have going on, and just a pure technical breakdown of the charts. I'll also jump into a quick breakdown of the Forex news events going on next week to watch for how they can affect our trading. And I really want to thank you guys all for tuning in. I hope you guys subscribe if you like what you see. Check out the Instagram page, core.fx, the website, CoreFX Trading. Thank you all. I appreciate it. Let's go ahead and jump into the charts. So taking it over here to the charts, my friends, starting as we usually do with the Euro US dollar. This is going to be the most heavily traded pair in Forex as we go over every week here. Uh, we have been seeing a very tight moving range, prices consolidating. We have higher, uh, lower highs and higher lows being formed. This is a high basing pattern. This is a pennant, a wedge, whatever it is you want to call it. On the weekly, you can see we are pinned under very strong resistance. And you can see these upper and lower wicks. There's just a huge indecision between buyers and sellers. And what we know about these consolidation type ranges is typically the longer they range and condense price, that typically correlates to a stronger breakout when price does finally make a move. So this upper and lower trend line is certainly what I will be watching. The upper trend line, there is more of a probability of a break. We are in an uptrend. This is a high basing pattern, which means we are in a series of price moving from lower to higher, bottom left to top right of the chart. We're setting higher highs and higher lows as we're going, and we are now pinned under a resistance basing. So momentum buying is all leaning towards the upside. This could very easily break out to the downside and reverse, but probability and odds say to the upside is where the break will be. 124 is going to be our initial resistance I want to see broken. And then after that, I want to see 125. We break above 125. I think the sky's the limit. Um, to the downside, I want to see 122 get broken. 122 gets broken. I'll have market structure broken. We'll have this bottom trend line broken out of, and I will be now considering this a downtrend looking for shorts on the euro dollar all in all i do expect some big moves coming out of the euro dollar pair soon and this is a great pair to trade makes very great very sustainable structured moves as you can see with these trends so i love trading the euro dollar when we see opportunities like this on to the pound dollar as you guys know i've been covering we have been in a very nice uptrend with the pound dollar as well back nearing pre-brexit levels at around dollar fifty um, we have been in an uptrend as I've been calling from you guys after we made this pullback to the 50 SMAs in this trend line, I told you guys we were most likely going to move back up to retest the high. That is exactly what we've done. We are now on a strong resistance level. This is a weekly resistance. This is our fourth touch to it. And we did close Friday with a shooting star candle. This is a bearish reversal candlestick pattern. Basically what this shows us is on Friday, buyers tried pushing price up above to break this resistance and potentially continue higher. Ultimately, by the end of the day close, sellers had stepped in, taken control, pushed price back down to slightly above the open. So what this is telling us is there is more selling pressure throughout the intraday candle than buying pressure shown by this upper rejection wick. This is telling us price most likely will correct to the downside before moving higher. We are in a very nice uptrend, so I am not expecting uh, to look to trade this to the downside or any reversal trades or anything like that. I'm simply analyzing what I see. I see some bearish rejection of this zone. I don't want to be long at the moment, but I do want to look for good opportunities to be long because we are in a nice uptrend. So I'll wait for a pullback. I would like to see a pullback to the 141 level. As you can see, if you look left, we've got some structure here. It's been respected multiple times as resistance and support and then resistance. Let's see it come back down to support, tap this trend line, and then maybe we get a push higher to break this higher high. That is what I'll be watching with the pound dollar um, to see if we're able to break this strong resistance. Also on the weekly, you can see it's 200 SMA is being respected. We're now touching it and pretty nicely hitting it. Not too much rejection off of it. Um, this week, we could see a little bit of a maybe spinning top or a little bit of a bullish candle, or maybe even a pullback all week. Not very drastic, but a slight pullback all week. And then we'll look for longs the coming week. That could be our move. 
Uh, dollar CAD, as you guys know, reversed its trend. We saw this head and shoulders pattern that we called. It broke the neckline, did pull back to retest, and has fallen off since. Broke the 200 SMA, the 50 SMA. We are now in a nice downtrend in the CAD dollar. If you apply structure to it, we are in an uptrend to here. Even in here, we were still respecting structure. We broke structure with this lower low that we've made now. So what we do expect is a little bit of a lower high. After the lower high, we'll be looking for shorts to now continue down, right? So um, my target for this pair in the near future for the next couple weeks is going to be back down to this weekly trend line. If you back it out here, you can see this trend line has been being respected since early 2013 or actually 2012, I believe. Touched it there, touched it there. We got lots of bearish momentum with these strong bearish weekly candles. I don't think it's just going to fall like a rock straight down to it, but this is my target in the next coming weeks. Back down here to about 124 on the pound, I mean on the dollar CAD, taking us to dollar yen. This is a tricky one. I was long dollar yen, as you guys know, anyone that has my course or follows my groups. Um, we broke this structure here, and now we've been basing. Last week, we did get what looked like was a breakout. As you can see on the four hour, we're following a nice trend, higher highs, higher lows. We did set a higher high last week, and this could very well bounce and continue higher. What I don't like is this daily candle. Again, like with the pound dollar, we have a shooting star close up here on resistance. It tried to break out. Sellers came back in and pushed lower. We are above the 50 SMA. The 20 SMA is wrapping back upward. We broke structure, set a higher high, higher low. We are respecting this uptrend line still. However, that candle is enough to make me hesitant to enter longs until I get additional confirmation that a continuation of this uptrend is likely to happen. So taking us to Swiss dollar Swiss franc, anybody who's in my group or my free chat knows that this was a great long for us at CoreFX this week. On the weekly, we have a mixed signal. We have Price at a lower low, pull back for a lower high, and we are at, I believe, a 50% fib here. Yeah, so um, this one weekly chart looks like it could roll over and continue to the downside. However, daily is in a beautiful uptrend. We're in a nice uptrending channel, setting higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. On this higher low, we broke above this strong weekly level, came back to retest it. On the daily, we had a spinning top indecision candle, and I was looking for a continuation to the upside with the end of this pullback, and that is exactly what we got. We rode price up to this prior swing high, took out our profits, and that was a good thing we did because now looks like this 200 SMA might cause a little bit of a double top. We got a spinning top close here on Friday as well. We've got one rejection to the 200 SMA, two rejections to the 200 SMA. Could be a classic double top, whether it's able to break back below this weekly um, resistance now acting as support down here at about 95.50. That is a question that we will have to wait and see. However, I don't want to be long in this pair anymore as this resistance is holding. I want to wait now for corrections to get in at wholesale, better prices, discounted prices, and then continue the uptrend after that happens, right? So moving on from there, we've got the Australian dollar, US dollar. Um, taking us to the weekly, this weekly trend line is something I've been talking to you guys about for a while now. We had one bounce, two bounce, three bounce, four bounce. This you could say is a fifth bounce. This strong weekly support has held here at around 97 as the floor. And as you can see this weekly, we got a very nice bullish engulfing bounce off of you, what you could say is a trend line touch, not quite, but it's in the zone. And this nice weekly support zone that is held very strong. Taking it to the daily, um, we are getting a little bit of mixed signals. We are setting lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high. It didn't break above this prior structure, so we are still respecting market structure. We're still on a downtrend. 50 SMA has held. 20 is below the 50. Price is below the 50 and the 200. Price tried to break up and above the 50 and the 200 this past week. But again, sellers came back, pushed the buyers out. 200 SMA, 50 SMA, both rejected, and we closed with this long upper wick candle off of this daily trend line as well. So this is telling me um, on the daily, this downtrend could continue. However, what I'm also seeing is a nice cup and handle reversal pattern, right? So with the cup and handle, we've got the top of the cup and handle pattern. We form the cup, 
we're forming a handle now. What we look for is a break and maybe a retest of this to go long or just a breakout of this handle underneath this resistance to potentially take this long in correspondence with the weekly chart. We want our time frames to line up. Time frame agreement is something I always talk about with you guys. We want it all to match up. Um, so shorting this right now would be disagreeing with the weekly. We're coming up to a strong level down here, strong weekly trend line, not necessarily something you want to be doing, even though there are some arguments for a short. Um, all in all, though, the weekly is telling us some very nice price action. So uh, just have to wait for that. I would like to see a break and retest of structure on the Aussie and get into a early on counter trend reversal to a new trend to the upside. But Again, we'll have to let price action wait and see and let us know what is going on. Aussie dollar, this falling wedge pattern I've been talking to you guys about for a long time now. As you can see on the weekly chart, we were moving upwards nicely, hit this resistance, and price has just been slowly consolidating lower in what we call as technical analysts a falling wedge, right? Price above the 50, above the 200, above the 20 SMAs. We set a higher high, higher low. We are in an uptrend, so this is a bullish continuation pattern. And what we see here is this past week, price was able to break out of this wedge and close outside of it. Taking it to the daily, you can see it a little cleaner. This upper trend line descending got broken, retested, nice doji candle rejection, popped to the upside. We're now at this resistance again. We did have a bearish engulfing close on Friday, which shows that there will probably be some correction. But this is a great opportunity to then look for longs, get in on the correction at better pricing, ride it back up to respect, retouch this, this high here and potentially even break out and set a new higher high on this pattern. All right, so that covers the dollar crosses. Great setups, quantifying and uh, creating themselves here in the coming weeks. So I'm gonna go ahead now and jump into my personal watch list, narrow down some of these other pairs. There's a lot of them on there. So bear with me here, guys. But if you like technical analysis, this is gonna be pure, raw price action technical analysis. If you want to see how I draw my trend lines, how I draw my support and resistance lines, please pop up, click the link, look below, go to the other videos. I have lots of free content on here, guys. Take advantage of the free content you can get. I show you guys how I draw these levels, how I do these lines, what I'm looking for in these markets. All right, so taking it over to New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen. We're in a downtrend. We're looking for shorts all through this time period. As I told you guys, we don't want to be trading choppy price action we want to be trading nice trending pairs so now this this downtrend has reversed a little bit of an ugly inverted head and shoulders here broke this trend line pull back slightly popped higher again this week we did have a bearish rejection of the 200 sma with a high wick candle close however what i would like to see happen out of new zealand yen is a nice pullback to around this level 78 um 50 range on the daily you can see it's a nice zone if you look left it's been respected multiple times get a little pullback to here then maybe we look for this support to hold give us a long opportunity to get in on the second wave of this uptrend so if you want to do a quick little um elliott wave analysis here with the start of this uptrend this could be a wave one maybe we get a corrective wave two maybe it comes up where we thought maybe it comes a little deeper then we get an impulsive wave three Corrective wave four, pulsive wave five, right? Elliott wave is a very useful tool, but it's also um, very subjective to each individual interpretation. It's very hard to say what stage this leg could be in here. Could be a correction of this downtrend. Um, but if this is a first leg impulse, we could look for a corrective leg two and try to get in on that third wave impulse, which as trend traders, we want to identify trends as early as possible and ride them as long as possible. And getting in on the corrective wave two phase of an Elliott wave is ideal because the wave one shows you there's a new trend. Wave two shows you corrective, better prices to enter. Wave three gets you those profits and pushes you onward. All right, taking us to now CAD yen, similar setup, trend reversed above the 20 and the 50 SMA. 20 SMAs whipped around um, sharply to revert to the upside. Price broke structure, higher highs set across the board. We would like to see a pullback now. We have a shooting star candle again, rejecting off of this zone. If you look left here, all the way left, really, you got this zone rejecting price, giving us that shooting star. I would like to see a pullback here, 
get in on a long somewheres in this 84 to 85 range if we get confirmation and then zing it higher to try to get in on that uptrend early on. Euro yen, another similar story. We were in this uh, basing pattern, broke out, reversed the trend, set a lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. Now we've come back up to break structure once again. If you check this counter trend line, you can see we've broken. We're now in a little bit of a high basing pattern here above the SMAs, above this strong daily support level. So again, another pair will be looking for pullbacks to enter long. Maybe this comes back down to 131, 132 range, bounces off this trend line. We get in a nice long to continue this uptrend higher here. Um, and this is looking like this could be setting up a little bit of a cup and handle as well, right? So another round bottom reversal coming down here with a little bit of a handle basing underneath as buyers get their positions ready and then pop to the upside. Um, moving on from there, we've got everybody seems to love the pound yen. I get asked about this pair more than anything there is. So uh, another one has reversed trend, was in a downtrend. This nice supply zone was holding, was what I was watching. Price broke above it. So now we have to be looking for longs. And what do we want to see? We have this upper rejection wick. We want to see a pullback to an area where we can look for support to be found. Enter with a long and ride that pair higher. That would be ideal. That is what we want to see. Pound Aussie in a high basing pattern within an uptrend under a strong weekly resistance. As you see, if you look left, very strong weekly zone. I mark my weeklies with blue, dailies with red. Um, as you can see, we are consolidating here. Again, like I explained with Euro dollar, when we have consolidation like this, we want to look for breakouts because breakouts can have strong moves when we have pairs like this. If you want, you can use a tool like this. We are in a flag pattern, right? So we had an impulse leg higher. We're now in consolidation forming a bull flag. If you want to see where price is likely to go after, you draw the flag pull prior impulse leg up before this consolidation, extend it into the future. If you look left, that will line up with this support and resistance zone as well. Right around the $1.90 area, that's a nice target you could look for. If this breaks out, now this is more long term. I'm just showing you guys all the technical analysis breakdowns, how we see these things. Um, so, Ultimately, we are looking for longs on pound Aussie. Breakouts to the upside would be nice here. Break, pullback, retest would be nice as well. But that is what we'd be looking for here. Pound Swiss franc, another one. We were, we are in a strong uptrend. We were consolidating under resistance. We broke out and shot a lot higher this week. As you can see, again, Friday closed with some upper rejection. Some take profiting happening up there, pulling price back. We would like to see a pullback to then look for long opportunities. Maybe get a counter trend line break enter long, move higher. Uh, another great pair and a strong trend that we want to be a part of these strong trends and try to hop on and ride the wave. Euro pound broke a strong level this week. As you can see, we've been in this ugly, ugly, ugly choppy range. Not really much trading going on. I was trading in here. I did make a nice short on this move here, but um, not. I haven't been trading it other than that. And now that we broke this level, we do have some good opportunities coming. What I would like to see on this pair, very simple, very straightforward, broke, support, now turn resistance, come up to retest this resistance, show me that it's not going to pass through, that this area is holding, enter short, stop up above the area, target down at the lower low, entry here, ride the wave down, easy three to one, two to one risk to reward, strong level, strong trend. Nice, easy, simple setup. That is the Euro Pound taking us on to the Euro New Zealand. Similar setup. As you can see on the daily, we've got a trend reversal, broke the trend line, broke structure, made moved lower, pulled back immediately the retest. This could very easily be an outside reversal, and price could just say, screw off support, I'm moving higher. Or it could break this, say, this is going to act as resistance now. This was just a retest and move lower. The 200 SMA is most likely what's causing this pressure. So we'll have to wait and see what this pair does. But I would like to see it move lower and then maybe get in on the next corrective phase out of it. Euro CAD, next pair I'm watching, same exact setup as the Euro New Zealand. 
Um, reverse trend, K move lower, broke support, looking for it to pull back a little bit, retest, and then enter short. Um, nothing crazy going on there. Pretty similar analysis. Euro Aussie is one that is really confusing everybody. Everyone's been watching. It's been an uptrend. It set a higher high, higher low, higher high, and has been retesting this structure. Hasn't broken structure yet on the daily. This trend line, you can say, yes, was broken. However, structure has not yet. That's higher highs, higher lows, support resistance holding horizontal. Now, if we look at the four hour, you can see this head and shoulders better, left shoulder, right shoulder, I mean, left shoulder, head, right shoulder, broke and now being retested, break and retesting this trend line. So on the four hour time frame, this does look ready to go lower. If that's something you trade, if maybe you trade the four hour, hour and 15 minute, four hour gave you the confirmation direction, hourly gives you the zones, 15 minutes gives you the entries, maybe you're going short. Um, I trade off the daily chart, so until this structure is broken, it's not valid for me. Price moving all the way down, then closing like that with this Dragonfly Doji is not a short trade I want to see. So I personally am watching on the sidelines, but a lot of nice technical stuff going on with this pair here as well. So definitely one you want to keep an eye on. And last but not least, Euro Swiss Franc. Not long we've been in a strong uptrend. This pair can be correlated at times. That's why there's some sloppy price action you see on these charts. Not a typical pair I like to go out of my way to find trades on, but when we break technical levels like we have this past week, broke up above this resistance, what I will do now is look for price to fall back down into this 182, uh, 1820, 1800 range. Look for support holding. Look for the buyers coming back into the markets and ride this wave back to the upside. See where we can go. See what um, trends we can catch this week, guys. A lot of setups coming in. Anybody in my groups, in my trade, in my course, anything, I will be away. I'll be on a cruise all week. This coming week, I wanted to get this video done early so that you guys could get as much out of it as you can. I'll try to access my internet as much as I can, throw some trades in here or there, answer some questions here and there, but I will be away this week. I uh, just wanted to throw that out there for you guys. I'm going to hop into the fundamentals real quick. We got a pretty loaded week ahead. I'm not diving into the actual reports like I used to. I want to keep this technical based and just let you guys be aware Monday a.m., April 16th, U.S. dollar retail sales, 30 to 50 pip moves typically on the U.S. dollar, something we want to watch. Monetary policy meeting minutes out of Australia, they cover their last central bank meeting. Another one that could have some drastic moves. Not only can we see some initial moves during the time of the event, but this could set the tone for the Aussie for the week. We could get a slight bearish uh, bullish momentum, let's say, for example to start during this event and then let's say London comes and opens and we get a nice strong follow through. So this is something to watch for not just the event, but afterwards. GDP out of China, very correlated with the Aussie, another double whammy type of event here. So this could cause a bigger pop than normal following this. GDP is the gross domestic product out of China, the biggest economic indicator that we watch for growth of countries and China's the second biggest economy in the world. So very important. Risk on, risk off theme also is very relevant around this. Tuesday, we've got the pounds uh, jobs reports. Claim and count is what they call their jobs report. Average earnings index is the earnings growth um, and their unemployment rate. Very strong event. Could cause anywhere from 30 to 100 pip move. So definitely keep an eye on this. Um, from that, we move to pound is another big news event. 4.30 a.m. on Wednesday, CPI. This is the core consumer price index, which is the core principal reading for inflation, something central banks watch very closely to determine their monetary policy interest rate statements. Uh, so this is something we very closely want to watch. CPI reports have been one of the heaviest watched events, and it can cause some very serious moves. CPI, again, year over year in Europe, it's the final reading, so it's not that drastic, but CPI numbers are something we want to be aware of. Bank of Canada rate statement out of Canada. They've been in a bullish hike cycle now. So definitely want to be aware of this. Can cause some very drastic 200 pip or so moves if we get something market's not expecting. Either way, expect extreme volatility Wednesday, April 18th around this Canadian dollar event. Bring us to CPI out of New Zealand that night. Again, CPI, strong data. New Zealand, not as much of a mover off of it, but still can be a very drastic mover. Watch your positions. If you trade news events, definitely want to be trading around that. And then you have Australian dollars employment change right after. These two are pretty heavily correlated. So all the uh, New Zealand Aussie pairs, Asia Pacific pairs, keep an eye on Wednesday evening. Aussie's employment report can cause some serious moves. 
Retail sales out of the pound, 30, 50 pip mover, nothing too crazy. Could be even less if it's on target, but could be a nice mover to help you, uh, you know, trigger a breakout or so on the pound. Then we've got CPI out of Canada. Again, huge report. We have their central bank meeting here and then this meeting following. So this is expected to be a very, very strong week for the CAD. So keep your eyes out. Watch out for these events. Don't, even if you hate fundamentals, don't be ignorant. Don't be oblivious to them. Know when they are. Know what's happening. What pairs can be affected. What pairs are correlated. So you don't lose beautiful technical setups by being ignorant and not following the news. All right, guys. Thank you so much. I appreciate tuning into these videos. I hope you guys get a lot out of them. Please check me out on Instagram, core.fx. Subscribe to my page. I promise you there will be loads more content coming out. Follow these weekly analysis videos. I will dive into these charts every week with y'all. Hopefully you guys can learn something. Throw some comments. You want me to cover anything in particular? And I will be sure to include your comment in the next video. I promise. That is a promise to you guys. So thank you all. Corey Smith here, CoreFX. All my Forex fiends, I appreciate the support. I'll see you guys in the next one.